Peace, infinite waters diving deep. Once again, we are here, baby, baby. How to handle negative thoughts, your overactive mind. Let's just, whoa, breathing in that good ass prana, baby. Do you have a lot of thoughts? Do you have an overactive mind? I got a question that came in from someone who asked this. They're like, hi, Ralph. Hi. How can I stop thinking all of these negative thoughts? Like, I sometimes think that the world is a very, very bad place, Ralph. Why do I have these kind of thoughts? Well, that's a great question. Does that ever happen to you? Sometimes you're like, hey, where did that negative thought come from? Let's face it, there is a lot of stuff going on on the planet right now. And we ain't even had breakfast yet. Can I get a hello? <laughs> Let me share with you what's helped me along my journey. Handle negative thoughts, an overactive mind, and transform it into thoughts which serve me. Now... With so much going on on the planet right now, I get it. Even I have negative thoughts sometimes. I'm like, what am I doing here, right? What's going on? <laughs> I get it. And I've realized that, you see, the secret is to not get drawn into fear. You gotta let love guide you and not fear. Mm. Slow motion this side. Mm. But I'm scared, Ralph. I don't know what to do. Okay. This is for you then. <laughs> I've realized this time and time again. You see, along my early journey, I had a lot of negative thoughts. I was living in a tight condition. And I was thinking, gosh, my life is never going to change for the better. I'm stuck, right? That word, stuck. I'm stuck. <laughs> so I realized this, that it was because of where I was. So ask yourself this question, where am I right now? Look at your environment because our environment shapes our thoughts. When I was in a very crowded city, I would wake up to cars just beeping, honking their horn, walk outside, pollution. I'm like, okay, I'm starting to get a lot of negative thoughts right now and I don't know where they came from. Get out of the way. I just don't know where they came from, right? We get, we, we forget to realize, <laughs> we forget to realize that everything is connected. So then I started to realize, okay, let me change my environment. Go somewhere more peaceful, more tranquil. I got my butt into nature, baby. Got the feng shui right. And all of a sudden, those negative thoughts that were there before weren't there anymore. How? <laughs> and I realize, oh, it's the environment. You see, place yourself in an environment which complements your true, amazing greatness. Because then you'll start influencing how you think. All of those super successful people you see, they could only, they could only do what they did because they had the right environment. Therefore, they had the right thinking space, baby. Mm. Slow motion this side. Mm. Our thoughts are our children. I realized this along my journey. I get it now. Our thoughts are our children. And what happens? A lot of people say, Ralph, 
I've got so many negative thoughts. I just want to, I just want to ignore them all. I don't want to deal with it, Ralph. And I'm like, okay, I get you. I don't want to deal with it either. Neither does a cat down the road. So let's just ignore those thoughts, like push them to one side, right? And then go to sleep. Wait a minute. I'm still thinking about those thoughts. <laughs> you see, resistance uh, makes stronger. And the harder you try to push those, the harder you try to push those negative thoughts away, the stronger they want to come into your mind and keep you up because they're like that, right? So I realize a secret that your thoughts are your children. Never ignore your children. Listen to them because there might be a message in there that you should really pay attention to. They may be trying to communicate something to you that might even help you become aware of something you weren't aware of before. I had a lot of negative thoughts one time that, gosh, so many people on the planet are like robots. I don't know where that came from. Is that kind of negative, right? But it actually was a good thing because I'm like, I don't want to be a robot. <laughs> I just want to live with a cat down the road and deep divers and stuff, right? <laughs> okay. So many people, this may be you, suppress how they feel. They suppress their thoughts. They're like, this is a good thought and this is a bad thought, right? So we suppress our thoughts over time. And therefore, yeah, you guessed it, it's gonna come out sometimes in a, in a very, very inconvenient time. When you're getting married, you have this really negative thought. What am I doing here? Don't worry about it, just get married. Look. <laughs> So, I realize it's not about suppressing thoughts. It's about becoming aware of what I am thinking and why am I thinking it? Like, where did this, where did, where did this thought come from even? Like, to begin with, why am I thinking of weird stuff, right? What's your most negative thought? Right, I think of, I think I have a lot of negative thoughts and I've realized that it's healthy, it's okay. It's not about just thinking positive or thinking negative. Ultimately, we wanna be thinking thoughts that are serving us. And I realize the moment I stop suppressing thoughts like, okay, I can't think this negative thought. I'm like, whatever. The cat down the road was like, whatever, just let it in. Allow the thoughts to come like passing clouds, baby, and they'll just drift away into another day. Oh, that rhymes, baby. Just drift away to another day. Drake, let's do a song, baby. Actually, Lauren Hill, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Look, so I started to realize it's not about suppressing your thoughts. It's not about suppression. It's about expression. And you can only do that by awareness by allowing, not resisting. Now let's face it, we have good thoughts and bad thoughts. Shakespeare said there are no good thoughts or bad thoughts, right? But thinking makes it so, right? Nothing is good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Right, and that's a very powerful statement, Shakespeare. You're a deep diver, right? You were a deep diver. Look, I love that because that's what I realized too along my journey. You see, our thoughts are very neutral. They didn't do anything wrong. I did nothing. That's what your thoughts are telling you. But you see, our thinking mechanism is what makes a thought good or makes a thought bad. Our upbringing, our social conditioning of what is right or wrong is why so many people have what we call negative thinking. Oh my gosh, Ralph. Yeah, because you're trying to be perfect with good thoughts, right? That's why you have a lot of bad thoughts. Don't try to be too slick, baby. So I realized this, that 
I don't have any good thoughts or bad thoughts. They're just thoughts. And what is making them good or bad is my attitude towards them, surely, right? So that's what will really help you transform your negative thoughts into thoughts which are serving you. Realize it is the attitude towards your thoughts which actually make the thoughts what they are. Mm. Slow motion this side. Mm. I've got an overactive mind. Do you? Don't worry about it. I do too. Join the club. Hold my hand and let's walk off into the sunset. Most people who have an overactive mind, what we call the monkey mind, it's always active, always chit chattering. <laughs> so a lot of people on the planet who do, I don't know why you're laughing in the background. Seven day vegan challenge. How's it going? I see a lot of people on Snapchat. Oh baby, eating some good food today, grapefruit. Peaches, pears, got the whole lot. Stimulants will give you an overactive mind. We forget that food influences our thoughts. And I know this firsthand because I used to eat everything, like everything, even the carpet. A lot of junk food as well, right? Ugh, carpet, no good. Right, and then I shifted my whole diet, I changed it. And all of a sudden I got new thoughts just by changing what I was putting into my body. Eating a more plant-based diet, I got a new mind, baby. And I didn't even have to pay that much for it, to be honest. <laughs> Stimulants, the biggest culprit, so sorry. We're talking about that white sugar, right? which is gonna keep you very active. It's actually a drug. I don't know why they sell it to us. That's another story. <laughs> We're talking about caffeine. Now, coffee. I was in Ethiopia, I had some beautiful coffee there. I love that coffee, by the way. I had it with some injera. Beautiful taste, but I don't drink a lot of coffee. But if you do, that's wonderful, go for it. But you see, high amounts of caffeine and other stimulants really are, is what is keeping us up at night, is keeping the mind overactive. Ever wondered why there's a coffee shop at every corner? You just bump into it, ouch, right? Because they need to keep your ass active to keep this matrix going. Mm. Slow motion this side. Mm. <laughs> I love the smell of coffee. But realize that everything in moderation. That's what helped me along my journey to realize I don't want so many stimulants. I'm not gonna be drinking a whole load of Red Bull before I go to sleep. Cause I wanna actually sleep. <laughs> so I realized for a long time, I was just like hyperactive. Fizzy drinks growing up, soda, burgers, fries, chocolate bars, right? A lot of stimulants in there, a lot of ingredients you don't, you can't even pronounce. That's a no-no. And then I came across watercress, the most nutrient dense vegetable in the world, full of magnesium. It's really gonna calm you down. Now you're feeling very sleepy, right? It's gonna calm your nerves down. Leafy greens, dark leafy greens will calm your overactive mind. It's that simple, plant-based diet. Just ask people who are on the plant-based diet. Has your mind like relaxed a lot since you've been on it? They're like, totally dude, right? <laughs> okay, now thoughts, negative thoughts, overactive mind. It's about, it's about occupying the present. That's what's helped me along my journey to really deal with an overactive mind and negative thoughts. Occupy the present. Where are you right now? I'm in the year 3000. I'm in, I'm 10 years ago. I'm five days ago. You're somewhere in the past, right? But what about right now? What are you doing? Are you even aware that you are watching this video right now? 
No? Don't worry about it. So, <laughs> I started to realize that for a long time I was just not here. Where are you, Ralph? Where are you? Even the cat down the road was asking me that. I was somewhere else, lost in space. And I'm a Pisces, so this is normal, but I realized that I gotta ground myself into the present moment. That is meditation, ultimately. And that will help you transform those negative thoughts into thoughts which serve you because now your attention is going on the present moment. You don't have time to shift your focus back there, only on what's in front of you. <laughs> now, I've realized the mind is very cunning. It's a beautiful tool, but like Osho said, a very dangerous master. Gosh, you don't want to make your mind the ruler of your life, baby. You want to make your heart that. But you really want to fuse both together. And I've realized that you don't want to believe everything your mind is telling you. Like, you don't want to believe every single thought. You're going to win the lottery in, in the next five minutes, right? That's actually a good thought. It just probably won't happen. Sorry about that. <laughs> could happen, Ralph. Of course it could. Look, every thought you have, I'm no good, Ralph, I'm terrible. That's your monkey mind playing tricks on you from your social conditioning, what you used to see on the TV of standards of beauty. They lied to you, man. Get your refund. You lost the ticket, the receipt. Well, that's your issue, sorry. <laughs> so I realized this that, hey, I'm not gonna believe every single negative thought about me because I have a lot of thoughts. I'm like, sometimes Ralph, you, should, you shouldn't have done that. You should have done this. And I'm like, this is my monkey mind going off at me again. But I'm not gonna believe every thought like it's the truth. I'm like, it's got a sense of humor. So I laugh with it. I laugh with my mind and my thoughts. And that's what helps me handle my overactive mind. You gotta have a sense of humor in life because if you don't, I'm so sorry. Look, nobody's getting out of here alive. <gasps> okay, that's good, start laughing now, right? Have a sense of humor, for goodness sakes. Now, <laughs> what helped me along my journey was to realize this, that you don't have to act on every thought you have. Like, if you get a negative thought, you don't have to act on it. You don't have to act on every single thought. Like, you might have a thought which says, go and change those clothes. <gasps> You might have a thought which says, you're a terrible person, right? You don't have to act on every single thought. Once again, realize that many of the thoughts we have are actually suppressed emotions trying to speak to you. That's all. They just wanted to say, can I get a hello there? But you ignored them. You cast them out and now they're coming back for revenge. <gasps> Don't worry about it. Well, make friends with your negative thoughts. How about that? Hold their hand, kiss them, take them out on a date. I'll pay for it. How about that? Now, reframe your mind. Get a new perspective, what I call the bird's eye view. Now, I was in a plane 48 hours ago, right? And I'm looking down thinking, oh my gosh, we're tiny people in an airplane. But when we're down here, we feel like so massive, right? That's perspective, baby. And it's a beautiful thing. You see, when you reframe your mind, you get a totally different perspective of everything. And you start to realize, actually, my thoughts, these negative thoughts are because you are only focusing from one angle. You've only got one lens. You need to change the lens, change the angle, change the perspective, get in a plane and look down. Get in, get in a plane and look down at everything and say, oh my gosh, those thoughts are nothing more than a drop in the ocean. I'm like in an airplane, I can't even see my house right now. The cat down the road doesn't even exist. 
and I can only see like that massive rock over there. And even that, wait a minute, I can't even see that right now. So it's similar to our thoughts. The more you really separate yourself from your thoughts and say, okay, I am not my thoughts. These are just passing clouds and I'm going to move further away from them and then see it from a totally different view. And that will give you a fresh perspective once you reframe your mind. Buddha said, your worst enemy can't harm you as much as your unguarded thoughts. Mm. Slow motion for Buddha. Mm. That's powerful right there. Oh, that's powerful, right? So you wanna once again become present reframe your mind, put your thoughts in perspective, realize, can you remember what happened to you five years ago when it was really bad that night? You remember? Of course you do. You got the selfies to prove it. Now you're like smiling because you made it out of that. But I know it took you five years to reframe your mind, but at least you did it. Now, if you have a negative thought, reframe your mind by taking a step back and if you're looking at the thought with only one kind of attitude, change it right now. How do you do that, Ralph? Well, realize that you need to surround yourself with other people to get new perspectives, right? I meet so many people every single day. I connect with so many people and I'm like, gosh, I had this really bad thought and they tell me theirs and I'm, I don't feel so bad anymore. I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> they got it way worse than me. That's not good either, Ralph. Okay, look, that's, that's okay, right? No, 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 okay. Look, <laughs> when you connect, when you surround yourself, when you surround yourself with better company, they can help you deal with your negative thoughts. Because once again, sometimes we get so preoccupied with ourselves, we get consumed upstairs, what I call upstairs living. Ever been downstairs before? No? Well, you should try it. Once again, you reframe your mind, a new perspective. If you're living upstairs, always in the headspace, come down to the heart space. Living in the heart space all the time, stay there, right? reframe your perspective. You see, many times we have negative thoughts because we feel stuck. You're stuck in a job, a relationship you don't like, you got no money, and the cat down the road has gone missing for the fourth time. What are we gonna do? It seems like the world is coming to an end, but wait a minute, we ain't even had breakfast yet. Can we at least do that first? <laughs> so I realize that better company is everything. I surround myself with people who inspire me, motivate me, who can help me become a better human being. A lot of the times it's a choice. If you surround yourself with people who trash talk about you, they talk behind your back, right? You don't feel good when you're around them. Once again, that's gonna influence your negative thoughts. But ultimately, you've got to start taking responsibility for what you are thinking. Whatever you focus on grows, whatever you tune into, you are becoming, right? So start becoming aware that you also have a part to play in whether or not you are thinking negative thoughts or thoughts which are serving you. The easiest way to think thoughts which are serving you is to start changing your environment, baby. And then you'll just say, feel so good to be alive, baby. Can I get a hello? <laughs> we are here in the art gallery. Whoa, breathing in that good ass prana, baby. Have a beautiful day, deep divers. We're here, infinite waters. Diving deep once again. Stay well, stay healthy. Peace. You. <laughs>